I'm going to study uh, the proof of work cryptocurrencies. And as all of you know, proof of work cryptocurrencies are criticized for the vast energy consumption. So this is somewhat inevitable because energy consumption is necessary uh, for maintaining the security of proof of work uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, but in April 2020, uh, Bitcoin's energy consumption is estimated uh, to be about 6 uh, gigawatt, and it's still growing. So uh, basically, we want to uh, improve this. A drastic solution is uh, to uh, switch from proof of work to proof of stake or some other uh, kind of you know, consensus mechanism. Uh, but, you know, uh, basically, you know, uh, basically, cryptocurrency community uh, does not, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, immediately accept such a kind of a drastic proposal. So uh, basically, you know, it is going to be also important to discuss a kind of marginal uh, change, uh, which is effective to reduce energy consumption. Okay. So in this paper, uh, we are going to study how uh, we can improve the security cost uh, efficiency of cryptocurrencies and how. And here, the security level is you know, uh, measured as a kind of a cost of attacking the system. And the you know, operation cost is a cost of operating system. So the security cost efficiency is a cost of attacking system per uh, cost of operating system. So the research, main research question is whether uh, we can uh, you know, improve this uh, keeping the proof of work framework. Okay, so in this paper, uh, we develop a model of much currency uh, you know, mining market uh, because analysis of uh, you know, such market is essential uh, for studying uh, you know, uh, the security. And we estimate the hash supply function or uh, you know, uh, hash supply function uh, by exploiting uh, the sub uh which happened in 2020. Okay, and uh, in this paper, we demonstrate uh, the role of difficulty adjustment algorithm. Uh, which is uh, you know an uh, algorithm to maintain uh, the uh, you know the block arrival rate to be you know once in ten minutes, and uh, you know uh, basically depending on the choice of the difficulty adjustment algorithm and you know miners behavior, uh, you know uh, the stability of the hash rate uh, will be uh, changed uh, affected a lot, and this stability is essential for the security constellation. So uh, this paper, uh, this slide summarizes uh, you know the main finding of this paper. Uh, you know, as we can expect, as we expect, uh, you know, the hash rate responds to the short-term reward change uh, by BAAs. And, you know, as the own LCC is positive, it means that if the Bitcoin's reward is increased, the hash rate uh, is also increased. And the hash rate to the uh, currency uh, responds to the reward of the rival currencies. So it means that if Bitcoin cash, uh, you know, our reward is increased, Bitcoin's hash supply is decreased. So these kind of things, uh, you know, uh, can be ex ex expected, but you know, uh, we uh, estimate the precise value of the elasticity around the third part. And uh, we find that Bitcoin faces in elastic miners and can survive regardless of the inefficiency of its DAA, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, termed original DAA in this paper, whereas other smaller coins, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Subscription, and so on, uh, face highly elastic miners. And because of this, uh, you know, the purpose uh, if uh, it uses uh, ancient DAA such as original DAA. And basically, uh, you know, what we found is uh, you know, the state of that DAA assert is quite efficient. And if all the cryptocurrencies move to assert, then the security uh, cost efficiency of this SHA-256 uh, cryptocurrencies uh, is improved by uh, 0 0.2 gigawatts or 3.2% uh, while maintaining the security. Okay, so let me uh, explain, you know, uh, our, uh, you know, uh, kind of, you know, model, the model structure. So first, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, let me uh, explain uh, the difficulty adjustment procedure. So uh, basically, uh, you know, computing a hash value uh, for proof of work currency is equivalent to, uh, you know, uh, one lottery draw. And, the, uh, you know, uh, the probability of success is, uh, you know, denoted by, denoted as a winning rate in this paper. And it's given by, uh, you know, a difficulty target over 2 to 256. Okay. And let H is a hash rate. And then, uh, you know, currency's block arrival uh, follows for some process uh, with arrival rate WH. Okay. So this is not a kind of our assumption, but, you know, this is, a, a, you know, just a kind of, you know, precise approximation of a binomial distribution uh, given by, uh, you know, this uh, kind of, you know, lottery to row structure. Okay. And Bitcoin family coins are uh, aimed at uh, you know, achieving one over the average is equal to uh, 10 minutes as a policy suggestion. It means that uh, you know, the average block time uh, becomes 10 minutes. Okay. 
And, uh, you know, uh, one thing uh, I'd like to emphasize is the winning rate also influences the expected reward rate uh, for miners. Uh, it is a kind of, you know, how many, uh, you know, uh, US dollars you can obtain uh, by exerting, uh, you know, one hash uh, to, uh, you know, uh, one currency. Okay. So it's given by this formula. It's a winning rate times price, uh, which is a reward provided for creating a block uh, times a uh, price, uh, which is, uh, you know, exchange rate between US dollar and uh, Bitcoin. Okay. By creating a one a block, uh, you know, uh, we might not have obtained about a kind of a six uh, in a Bitcoin. Uh, six Bitcoin is worth, uh, you know, some amount of the US dollars uh, by multiplied price. Uh, then uh, basically, I know we can compute this. And uh, because we are, we should, uh, you know, consider the expected reward. So we should uh, multiply the winning rate, uh, which is a probability success of the algorithm. Okay. And uh, basically, uh, you know, this winning rate uh, is algorithmically adjusted uh, by, uh, you know, each, uh, you know, currencies. And each currency has used different types of difficulty adjustment algorithms. So since its launch, uh, Bitcoin uh, keep using uh, you know, original DAA, uh, which is invented by probably Satoshi Nakamoto. And uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin Cash uh, started to use emergency difficulty adjustment, uh, which is not uh, you know, studied in this paper. But you know, uh, it started to use uh, you know, uh, chain work 144 uh, from November 2017. And more recently, after the third halving, uh, you know, uh, they switched to a third. Okay. And Bitcoin subscription uh, is forked from Bitcoin Cash, and it's still using chain 1.44. Okay. And these DAAs exhibit different performances. Okay. I don't know how many of you have read uh, our my previous paper. Uh, you know, I proved that original DAA fails uh, when a hash supply is elastic. Uh, but you know, chain work 144 and assert performs well even under uh, the elastic hash supply. So in this sense, uh, you know, I said I said that original DAA is in issue. So let me briefly uh, review the structure of three DAAs. So due to the time constraints, I'm going to skip the detail of DAAs. But the original DAA is a periodic adjustment. It adjusts the winning rate for every 2016 blocks. Okay. When uh, you know uh, the 2016 blocks uh, arrive, the, this you know uh, the timing uh, for changing the winning rate uh, arrives, then uh, this original DAA compares the average block time and the targeted block time, and multiply it to the old winning rate to update uh, the new winning rate. So Bitcoin is still using this uh, you know, simple rule of uh, difficulty adjustment, and uh, I'm gonna uh, skip the detail of you know my analysis. But you know, uh, by analyzing a single currency environment, uh, you know, I proved that uh, you know this original DAA is stable only if reward elasticity of the hash supply is more than one. Okay, so this condition uh, means that uh, if the reward is changed by one percent, uh, the hash supply should be uh, changed less than one percent. Okay, so uh, this is going to be a kind of a stringent condition. So you know, uh, this is why I'm insisting that this original DAA is somewhat inefficient. Uh, in contrast, the chain work 144 is not making a periodic adjustment, but you know its adjustment is continuous. Uh, it uh, you know look uh, it changes uh, the winning rate for every single block, and you know when it adjusts the winning rate, it looks at the moving average of the past block time. So the, this, this detailed uh, your formula is complex, so you don't have to remember it. But the important thing is, uh, you know, it changes the, uh, you know, uh, the winning rate every block, looking at the win uh, previous, you know, 144 blocks moving average of block time. Uh, thanks to this nature, uh, chain 144, 144 is stable as long as elasticity is smaller than 144. So it's quite stable. And if, uh, so basically it doesn't happen in any case, but, you know, if this is insufficient, uh, we can just increase, uh, you know, this parameter to uh, make it uh, more stable. So finally, a third uh, is the most I know recent uh, I know uh, I know uh, difficulty adjustment algorithm. Uh, it's currently uh, used by Bitcoin Cash, and its adoption is after the third halving. So basically, uh, you know, it multiplies the old winning rate. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, this factor, and this uh, this is a kind of exponential term, and uh, you know, you don't have to uh, remember this uh, formula uh, neither. But uh, basically, uh, you know, assert uh, is also stable and as long as the elasticity is more than, uh, you know, uh, 575, 
uh, then uh, you know, it is stable. And in addition to that, uh, we can discuss that uh, the, you know, the assert adjustment is monotonic, and therefore, uh, you know, assert is uh, you know, more uh, you know, desirable than a chain work ER144 in the sense that it successfully uh, prevents oscillation. Okay. So let me uh, you know, explain how uh, we can define the cost of operating system. Uh, the cost is the energy consumption, and the miners spend energy to supply uh, you know, hash computations. So hash rate uh, is proportional uh, to the energy consumption. So uh, in this paper, we regard the average aggregate uh, hash rate as the cost of operating system. So the security is also measured by uh, the hash rate. As you know, uh, many attacks to, to the pre proof of rack cryptocurrencies uh, you know, uh, is you know, uh, kind of more serious and relevant uh, if the, uh, you know, the hash rate is low. Uh, but you know, uh, basically the important thing here is depending on the economic conditions, the hash rate changes over time. Okay? And if the hash rate, uh, which is the security level of the cryptocurrency changes over time, the attacker naturally wants to aim at the timing at which the security level is decreased. Okay, so if you want to, you know, cut down uh, this chain, you don't aim at somewhere around here, right? So if this is a chain, uh, you know, you want to cut, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, weak point, and we can say the same thing uh, to, uh, you know, uh, the cryptocurrency. Okay, if the hash rate is changing over time, naturally we want to, uh, you know, aim at this point, and if the hash rate is not uh, you know, uh, oscillating, I mean, uh, you know, hash rate is stable over time, then uh, we can make the security, uh, you know, more secure, uh, you know, uh, even when the average uh, hash rate, uh, which is the energy consumption, is fixed. Okay? So, to be more precise, a momentary jump does not matter. So, rather than the minimum, uh, we use the 5 percentile uh, instead of the minimum. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, our point is the security should be measured by the minimum of the hash rate, and the energy consumption should be measured by the average of the hash rate. Okay, so let me uh, briefly explain uh, you know, my notations. So it's a continuous uh, time model. And uh, you know, uh, the set of the cryptocurrencies is denoted by K. And the winning rate e of uh, you know, uh, cryptocurrency K uh, at time T is denoted by WKT. Uh, price is MKT. Exchange rate uh, is EKT. And the expected reward rate is, as I explained, the multiplication of these three. And after observing this expected reward rate, uh, you know, uh, miners uh, decide how much uh, to provide uh, you know, the hash rate. Okay? And this hash rate is endogenously determined as a function of the reward rate. So to be more precise, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, the miners' uh, you know, uh, profit maximization structure is something like this. So each cryptocurrency provides uh, some expected reward uh, to miners. And after observing this, miners decide uh, which currency to mine. Okay? And uh, as, a, as a kind of consequence of the total uh, you know, uh, effort exerted for Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin subscription, uh, you know, the currency case hash rate is determined. And uh, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, we want to uh, you know, uh, clarify the relationship between expected reward and uh, you know, hash rate. So we measure uh, reward elasticity of the uh, uh, miners' hash supply. So uh, you know uh, we approximate the hash rate function by log log linear function. So if we take a log, uh, then basically uh, you know it's a kind of a, a log h is linear in log or reward. And here uh, you know uh, we are uh, you know uh, introducing a kind of on and close uh, you know uh, uh, you know a reward elasticity of hash supply as a coefficient beta. So our aim is to estimate the parameter alpha and beta, uh, you know, uh, around here. So uh, you know, uh, basically, I'm going to skip uh, all the methodologies, but you know, uh, uh, you know, it's something like this. So we are going to look at the short period uh, before and after uh, the uh, you know third party. Okay. So at this period, uh, we observe a kind of large reward difference uh, in a kind of uh, you know a very uh, you know short uh, you know, uh, period. So uh, it is a kind of ideal situation to estimate uh, these parameters. And uh, basically, I know what uh, we did in this paper. So this is uh, I know our technical contribution. So if I have time, I want to explain it, but I'm going to skip it. But you know, we evaluate the likelihood of I know block arrivals as a function of parameters alpha and beta. And basically, in my model, I know the expected reward determines the hash supply. 
uh, the, uh, you know, the half supply uh, functions, uh, some half supply structure determine the arrival rate of much clock non homogeneous in a Poisson process. And by evaluating the behavior of this, uh, we uh, characterize the likelihood function and estimate the parameters uh, by using uh, in a maximum likelihood method. So uh, this is the estimation result. So uh, you know uh, this uh, you know uh, the left column uh, is left column is a constant. Uh, this uh, you know, uh, right column is what uh, we want to see. Uh, this is the reward elasticity of hash supply. And you know the first thing uh, we can observe is these diagonal components are positive, and the other uh, you know, components are negative. It means that the hash supply is increasing uh, in uh, you know the currency's own reward. Uh, but decreasing in its rival ground. So this is a natural uh, you know, uh, condition, right? So uh, you know, if uh, you know, uh, I, my, the Bitcoin's uh, reward is increased, I want to enter Bitcoin mining. And if Bitcoin cash the reward is increased, even when I originally uh, you know, mined a Bitcoin, sometimes you know, I want to switch from Bitcoin to sorry, Bitcoin cash. So uh, you know, uh, this you know, uh, sign is consistent with uh, you know, uh, my story. And Bitcoin's, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, elasticity is much smaller than Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin distribution. It seems that there are many lawyer miners, uh, you know, who only mine, uh, you know, Bitcoin, even when uh, it is more profitable to mine uh, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin distribution. And you know, this is why Bitcoin uh, could do uh, with efficient DAA. Okay, so uh, I showed that original DAA performs well as long as elasticity is smaller than one. And uh, so far, uh, Bitcoin's elasticity is smaller than one. So this is probably the reason why Bitcoin could survive. In contrast, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Substitution is facing much more elastic uh, you know, miners. So uh, its own elasticity is five or uh, something like that. So if they used uh, you know, uh, uh, Bitcoin's original DAA, uh, it could not survive. But because they use the chain work 144, uh, which is uh, you know, stable as long as the elasticity is more than 144, they could survive. Okay. And uh, you know, as a counterfactual simulations, uh, I showed that uh, you know, when uh, Bitcoin subscription and Bitcoin cash uh, use the original uh, DAA, then uh, basically the expected block time uh, becomes much far uh, from uh, you know, uh, 600 seconds. So uh, it's going to be a kind of catastrophic outcome. So, uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Substitution survive uh, because they adopted chain work 144, which is much more stable than uh, Bitcoin. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, basically another thing I showed is, you know, uh, assert is even more, uh, you know, efficient than chain work 144. So this, you know, uh, uh, you know purple lines uh, represents uh, the Bitcoin Cash, uh, you know, uh, block time uh, when uh, you know, as a, uh, when chain work 144 is used, and this yellow and the green line uh, shows as a case under which uh, you know, uh, you know assert is used. So expected block time uh, is much less, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, much more stable uh, when assert uh, is introduced. So finally, uh, let me explain the uh, security cost efficiency. As I explained, the security cost efficiency is measured by the you know, 50 percentile of the hash rate for the average hash rate. And what we can see here is uh, Bitcoin's security cost efficiency uh, is large uh, because uh, it has you know, a lot of inelastic miners. Uh, but you know, if uh, you know the other coins, uh, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Subscription use uh, you know, the original DAA, then uh, basically the cryptocurrency economy becomes much more stable. So Bitcoin's own security cost efficiency uh, is also ideal. Uh, so in this sense, Bitcoin is benefited by the adoption of uh, you know, uh, chain mark 144 or such uh, by Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Subscription. And I uh, you know uh, currently Bitcoin has a very large uh, you know security cost efficiency, but if it's adopt, it adopts you know assert, then uh, you know it improves uh, you know uh, the security cost efficiency are uh, first. And as for Bitcoin Cash, uh, basically uh, you know uh, its spec is uh, lower than uh, Bitcoin because of elastic miners. And uh, you know uh, if the original DAA is used, uh, it becomes uh, very catastrophic. And upgrading assert uh, substantially improves uh, the security cost efficiency. 
And we can say the same thing to Bitcoin substitution. Okay. So finally, uh, let me I know uh, explain how much energy uh, could be I know saved uh, uh, you know maintaining uh, the I know the energy consumption. So currently uh, I know uh, six point uh, you know, five uh, gigawatts uh, of uh, energy is consumed uh, in total. But if we switch to uh, you know assert, uh, then uh, we can save energy by uh, zero point two gigawatts. And you know, uh, basically, uh, because uh, Bitcoin is large in magnitude, while you know fractional uh, in, in improvement is relatively small, but uh, most of the gain is from uh, you know, Bitcoin. And you know, uh, as uh, if we look at you know the uh, percentage, are uh, basically a uh, Bitcoin cash and Bitcoin subscription, uh, you know, is uh, you know facing a kind of large improvement. Okay, so let me conclude. Uh, the hash rate uh, responds to uh, the short term reward change uh, by DAA, and its own way of safety is positive. And the hash rate uh, to uh, currency responds to the uh, reward of rival currencies, and its cross elasticity is negative. And our contribution is you know, to propose uh, you know, a method uh, to estimate uh, you know, the uh, shape of the hash supply function. And uh, you know, we find that uh, Bitcoin faces in elastic miners and can survive uh, regardless of the inefficiency of its DAA, while uh, other smaller coins, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Subscription, face highly elastic miners and collapse uh, with an inefficient DAA. Okay? And uh, you know, uh, while Bitcoin can do its current original DAA, but uh, you know, there's no guarantee that uh, Bitcoin's hash supply elasticity remains low even in the future. And in addition to that, uh, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, by upgrading it to assert, uh, we can improve, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the stability of Bitcoin, uh, you know, slightly. So uh, basically, we suggest uh, to, uh, you know, integrate, uh, you know, assert uh, to these currencies, and by upgrading the DAAs uh, with state of the art DAA improves the security cost efficiency, and according to our counterfactual simulations. Uh, it saves energy consumption rate uh, by uh, 0.2 gigawatts for 3.2 percent while maintaining the security level. Okay, so this is uh, everything I prepared. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, thank you for having me discussing this paper. It's a paper which has like a very nice and detailed uh, explanations about how this uh, security in this uh, different uh, versions of Bitcoin effectively work and in this discussion. I'm going to first say a couple of words about the background and then uh, highlight again the key findings from the paper and then propose some uh, probably best described as clarifying questions or the small extensions that uh, you could do. Okay, so in terms of the context, it is uh, nice to think of it in terms of the blockchain trilemma as formulated or usually attributed to Putterin. So uh, of course, as we discussed yesterday, you visit in uh, some other uh, classifications of the blockchain trilemma. But the key idea is that if one wants to achieve at the same time decentralization, security, and scalability, we have a problem. So things are relatively easy if you are willing to give up uh, decentralization because we could have some proof of authority and manage uh, transactions pretty fast. Many people in this audience are also thinking of systems around uh, decentralized systems that could be more uh, scalable related to proof of work and next discussion. 
building on oh, sorry proof of stake I want to say uh, on uh, proof of work and the lightning network but uh, this paper particularly looks at the security question uh, very specific to the classical uh, proof of work problem behind uh, uh, Bitcoin so it primarily focuses on the security but the issue has relevance to the scalability because eventually if one wants a Bitcoin versions to be some form of uh, fiat currency that is actually reasonably frequently used for transactions we would want it to be more scalable and so what's a proof of work problem essentially is is like a modified and norms problem so we have the previous hash we have some information and the difficulty what this paper is focusing on is to do with what criteria we want for the new hash so many computers are going to try to modify one number in the code until we get the hash rate suitable features so you can imagine if we are having the representation of uh, hexadecimal when we want to have a bunch of numbers that say zero anybody could very quickly like uh, come up with something which has only one zero in front we can even do it in our own computer which uh, uh, manually even without using any program if you have a bigger difficulty adjustments and it takes more time and the reasons that we don't want it to be too easy is that it can create uh, many competing histories which defeats all the point of uh, blockchain records uh, enabling uh, an agreed history if it is too hard then things become like impossibly slow so that's why it's a difficult day uh, adjustment algorithm needs to adjust it when blocks are mined too slowly we want to make things a bit easier we say uh, mine too fast and we want to make it a bit harder as this comes into the different forks of the bitcoins that uh, are proposing some relatively small modifications on the original uh, Bitcoin algorithm uh, related to these topics and what this paper explores. So we have this uh, different hardware folks when not everybody agreed with uh, new rules that were proposed and uh, disagreed with what sort of modification we wanted to have. So in August 2017, Bitcoin split uh, into what stays being called uh, Bitcoin and the Bitcoin Cash. And later on, there was another disagreement in 2018, November, where there was a further split between the Bitcoin Cash and uh, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, as it is uh, called. And so in terms of uh, scalability, all this try to make things tiny little bit more scalable. So the first things that we might want is like, well, why to keep the block size so small, one megabyte, but there was like a disagreement about it. It's a good thing to be increasing the block size so a lot or not, because we need to transfer more data as well in this uh, cases. So what uh, is still called Bix, uh, Bitcoin uh, still increased effectively the block uh, size, but by going for uh, SegWit, which is effectively uh, separating the core transactions like the receivers and senders and the other validation data that we need, for example, checking that somebody actually has a Bitcoin. So effectively making the blockchain already a bit uh, bigger here, up to four megabytes. And the Bitcoin Cash is uh, main difference is that uh, it aim to allow more transactions within the block. So eight megabytes later on, 31 megabytes. Then in the further split between the two, there would be also some disagreements about um, whether some miners should be taxed in order to develop the system further. This is what uh, was going on here, some other features. And uh, the further increase of the Bitcoin Satoshi vision, which makes the block size even bigger and potentially increasing the all right, so this is like effectively what uh, this um, different approaches have done. And in terms of the difficulty adjustment methods, there would be different approaches as well. So the Bitcoin stick to the original difficulty adjustment algorithm, where effectively in every two weeks, we are looking whether things are being mined too fast or too slowly, and we make it harder or easier compared to the systems which are doing it in a more smooth and continuous uh, basis. And it came from the fact that there was uh, presumably less uh, mining or attention to the Bitcoin uh, cash shows that made the situations where uh, 
So it would be too few miners, like potentially dangerous for the security risk. So there was a quick fix based on the EDA. And then the smoother versions that uh, were just uh, explained in a greater detail. So either looking at um, where, so uh, moving average, where we are not waiting for two weeks, but adjusting the uh, adjustment uh, every 144 days based on the moving average. But that one creates um, some undesirable fluctuations. So the other tries to make the things even smoother by using an exponential uh, function. So overall, the splits have uh, dealt with kind of two issues that were in this initial trilemma, like uh, making some improvements on the difficulty adjustment, which is relevant to the security and doesn't need to uh, influence other parts as well as uh, increasing the block size, uh, which is uh, enabling a little bit more scalability in, based on the proof of work system. Okay. So what this paper does, its main goal is to assess uh, security efficiency uh, trade-off, because as it was said, like uh, having this more security is uh, costly in terms of energy, not great for the environment, and uh, the more we can optimize it, the uh, better it would be if one wants to use a proof of work. Okay? And what is making, of course, is uh, free forms of Bitcoin nicely comparable because, as we just saw, they are built on the same original blockchain. They all use the same hashing function. They are all aiming for the block creation time of 10 minutes, be it good or bad, or slow or not. It is all constant here. But uh, they differ in the, in the difficulty adjustment rules and as well as in block size. And uh, uh, from the economics point of view, one could also argue that it's not totally clear, even so the prices of this free seem to be very correlated, so that the users will always consider these ones as a same sort of currencies. I mean, are they just like uh, different versions of the same field, uh, things that are perfectly substitutable, or would the uh, expectations uh, differ there? It's a bit of an open question. And so the key variable here is the security per energy consumption, which is looking at the ratio of minimum, or more precisely, in the estimation, the fifth uh, lowest percentile of the hash rate and compares it with the average hash rate. And the idea here is that if you want to attack it, you want to do it at a time when it's easier to have to attack because the hash rate is uh, uh, low. While the energy consumption itself depends on the average hash rate of the system. And so the main findings here is that um, uh, Bitcoin has the best features of this security pair uh, energy consumption, and this is mostly due to it having a more elastic hash supply, as I estimate, while not a particularly optimal difficulty adjustment protocol. So the paper builds a model and then makes simulations to make this argument and then estimates that should Bitcoin and others adopt a better difficulty adjustment mechanisms, the other, such so one which was smoothing it over time and, um, and using the exponential functions, and we would save 3.2% of operating costs. It's not mega big, but it is definitely something for a system that is rather costly. And there are other findings. So in terms of my comments, my first uh, comment would be something that I think would be really nice and uh, not too complicated to add to this paper, is to further explore scalability. Because as I just said earlier, there is modifications of these different um, versions of Bitcoin also came with uh, increase of a block size. So that means more transactions. So even though the paper has an argument that the original Bitcoin is kind of, uh, has a good efficiency, so good security for the energy, then if you're considering the overall number of transactions, like is it uh, still the case? So maybe there is a potential better value for one of the other uh, versions. Okay, so it would be nice and interesting to compare. Second, one could also wonder a little bit uh, about the substitutability between the currencies, like both from the point of view of users as well as from the uh, miners. And the point here is that 
All says fiat money they have value, which is driven by the expectations of them having a uh, value. So is it really obvious that uh, users are considering them like close to perfect uh, substitutes, or is there still a strong preference for the Bitcoin just because it's the one that managed to keep the original name and that sounds most familiar to other people? Um, so. Relatedly, the paper is estimating the returns in US dollar instantly, so one could also wonder that uh, maybe we want to build in some expectations, because indeed, if we are mining as an immediate returning into US dollars, so there is no problem, but maybe people also aim to hold it uh, to avoid the transaction costs of turning it to US dollars, and then these expectations could matter. Second, it's a question, as I'm not a miner, I just don't know, the paper says that the mining equipment uh, enables uh, switching between uh, all these versions, but it would be nice to have a discussion uh, on uh, how costless it really is in the reality. Is it uh, really something that, I guess, that all mining equipment uh, enables? Um, is it true for all miners or the ones that have the best equipment? Is this uh, switching between which one to mine some things that somebody needs to uh, uh, pay attention to and choose like consciously or it's something that is programmable? I think that would be helping to clarify it. And as I am out of time, my other comments are more minor and I can tell you later on. So it's a very interesting paper and uh, I enjoyed reading it. Thank you.